This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 204, baby. Oh yeah, we are back after a two-week break. How is that going for you? Are you okay with this? It's still a bit strange for me, but I think you were getting bored of me weren't you? Um, But if you are interested in listening to more um, episodes of Rock and Roll English, remember there are 600 other episodes, nearly 600 other episodes in the Rock and Roll English family. And you can register your interest if you want by going to the website and clicking on family. Just register your interest and get one of those free 600 episodes. My favourite one, if you're asking, and then membership will open again in September. But in today's episode, I speak to the hell Razor again. Yes, that's right. And we speak about nights out. You will see why we have chosen that topic. We also discover a new tongue twister. And at the end of the episode, you will see how a boring story leads to something wonderful. Okay, this is what rock and roll English is all about. We talk and we talk. Some stories are boring, but they will always bring you to something fantastic. That will make more sense when you listen to the episode. So here you go. Oh, and one more thing for this episode. I do talk about something that I did that I'm not particularly proud of. Okay, but just remember the last time... I did this horrible thing on the street. Um, I was probably about 20. And if you had spoken to me when I was 20, you would have realized that I was a complete, complete idiot. Okay, so I don't do this anymore. I just thought I would mention it so that I don't get arrested. I will speak to you again at the end. Happy listening. Hellraiser, how are you today? Martin, hello. I'm great. And what about you? I thought you weren't going to ask for a minute there, um, but you did. And of course, I am always fantastic, Hellraiser, always fantastic, especially now I'm talking to you. I'm wondering if you're going to have any other fantastic ideas in this podcast after the last time you were on the show and you gave us the wonderful idea of uh, of Batman masks to, to fight COVID. Not not just Batman. It was any, any super like Spider-Man. I mean, it's, it's picking up in South Sudan at the moment. It's getting quite a lot of traction. So, that's uh, good. I was hoping it comes to Europe as well. Sure. Nice, nice uh, rock and roll vocabulary. It's picking up, like it's starting to increase. Um, as maybe you saw, I did post a picture of me with a Batman mask, but um, I didn't actually buy that mask. I just went to a shop, a fancy dress shop. So that's a shop where you can buy stuff like this. Um, and I thought, do I want to buy this or should I just take a picture? Um, and I thought, I'm just going to take a picture and I, I really did feel like I was a robber or doing something illegal when I was taking the picture. But no one saw. I got the picture. I won. OK. You should have bought it. I don't, I don't understand. what. How much was it that you decided to not buy it? Three euros, mate. Three. Mm, OK. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot Good of money. Good choice. OK. You put your safety and others, risk, others at risk for three euros. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Maybe one euro, I would have thought about it. Three, you're having a laugh. Um, anyway, Hellraiser, how do we usually start the show? Uh, review time from the loving fans. Yep. Do you think we have one? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, good, because you're correct. Um, it's yes. a Facebook review, which is always good. Um, and it's from Mohammed Al Said Omar. Um, Again, apologies for the pronunciation. And it says, obsessed with this fascinating podcast, even though I found it on the internet only two days ago. I listened to more than 22 episodes in this period, and I feel like this was the missing part in my English studies. Shout out to Dan the Man, Hellraiser, all podcast guests, and you, Martin. Keep on rock and roll English. Peace. Oh, yeah. Wow. You, you got a mention there, Hellraiser. Happy with that? Yeah, happy with that. I'm just a bit concerned he's watched, he's listened to 22 episodes in two days. That's 11 a day. <laughs> he should he should really leave time for other activities as well. I mean, the show's great, but just be careful with your time. Yeah, it, it is like a, a, a drug. I think you can get addicted to it. Everything in small doses. Exactly. 
life is about balance, um, Mohammed. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great advice again, Hellraiser. Um, so, do you know what we're talking about today, Hellraiser? I I don't. I have no idea. I'm I'm quite excited about this. Tell me. You you really do sound excited. That's the beauty of it. Um, so I thought, um, again, kind of with the whole COVID stuff, like we've done lots of things now. And I thought to myself, I'm kind of forgetting how to go out now of like have a night out. So when I say a night out, I mean like go out drinking, bars, clubs, all of this thing, because obviously I was doing that loads um, before the lockdown. Um, and now the lockdown's happened. I, I don't actually know in Italy if it started again, but I've thought to myself it's been so long since I've done that I've kind of forgotten so I thought we could look at some things about a night out the do's and don'ts of a night out Hellraiser okay I can't remember the last one I had so this will be a walk down memory lane yeah lovely rock and roll vocabulary there walk down memory lane to yeah experience something that obviously you remember from the past we we've had a few of those nights out haven't we Hellraiser in our day sure have sure have sure have Sure have. Um, okay, so the first one, I think this is mainly for the girls, um, is don't wear high heels because it doesn't look very good falling over um, with high heels on, which is a common sight in England at one o'clock in the morning, seeing um, women fall over with their high heels. Um, I actually thought about, though, when I'm, we started going out, Hellraiser, when we were 16, and I don't even think I even told you this, even though I was going out with you, but I used to put socks in my shoes to make me, like, a centimetre taller because I was thinking, <laughs> if I've got socks in my shoes, then then they'll think I'm 18, okay? All I need is the socks in my shoes. That's a great idea. Um, I didn't know that. I mean, you've always... You haven't really grown in height since you were, I don't know, 10. If if anything, I've actually shrunk. So I shrunk think. is actually getting smaller because I think my back is starting to curve more and more. <laughs> and so my head is just going further and further down. So, uh, yeah, but with those socks in the shoes, it, it changed everything, mate. Were they like thick socks, sports socks, or just uh, your normal suit shock, suit socks? Suit shot socks. <laughs> D- difficult to say that one, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real tongue twister. Tongue twister indeed. Um, no, I actually used to put football socks in there, like real serious shit, like none of your suit socks. That is difficult to say, isn't it? I think we've discovered a new tongue twister there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so another one here. Um, this one is, is a classic of don't hand over your credit card at the bar. Um, that's happened a few times, I think, in the past to you, hasn't it, Hellraiser? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> put it behind the bar just uh just everybody just go in yeah it, it's strange that it seems like such a good idea at the time like yeah you know i'm i'm i miss the party man yeah drinks are on me what do you want yeah you want a drink sure what do you want yeah double vodka sure no problem and then when you wake up the next day and you find those receipts in your pocket and you think oh for fuck's sake yeah yeah it's not a good feeling with a hangover on top of everything it's just not it's not good <laughs> I used to get into the habit of just throwing the receipts away before I got home, just so that I wouldn't um, wouldn't uh, hurt myself emotionally in the morning even more. Good idea, that. Good idea, because then then it's like you haven't spent the money, isn't it? So, and the money's still there in your bank account. Exactly. Yeah, it's just like living in a, um, an alternative reality. <laughs> really fun. Okay, so another one here is um, don't take up smoking because you've had a drink. It's not cool, kid. So take up, don't start smoking. Um, I think that's actually how your smoking habit started, didn't it, Hellraiser? You thought you were cool, the cool kid on the block, all of this, have a cigarette. Um, it wasn't cool, Hellraiser, okay? And I often remember you trying to make me smoke as well. Did, I, I don't think that that's true, is it? I didn't even try and make you smoke. I think you wanted to smoke because I smoke and you kind of look up, looked up to me. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I actually think that is true. Um, I just thought, oh, fucking hell, he's smoking. He looks really cool. Yeah. So yeah. I will try and s- smoke this cigarette and then like take a drag. So that's what you like when you breathe in a cigarette. And then go, <coughs> like think, doing my absolute best not to cough. Face going red. So it's, it is a surprise why all the girls didn't want didn't want a piece of me uh because obviously 
I was looking extremely cool with that cigarette that I didn't know how to smoke. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. Irresistible. <laughs> Irresistible. Yeah. So then luckily, though, it didn't last very long that period. I think very, very short. I can only remember it happening a couple of times before. I, even though I was a complete idiot, I thought this isn't just this isn't for you, Martin. OK, take let's try something else the the fruit machines that's what i used to do to to look cool like the slot machines so i used to think if i put some money in this bad boy people are going to think i'm some sort of bad boy gambler okay so I'll, I'll have a bit of that definitely yeah i mean if there's one way to um to pick up women it's by playing a fruit machine they <laughs> girls just generally love that kind of thing yeah. You, you, a man standing in silence looking at mm. lots of flashing lights and wasting pound coins that is pretty irresistible to the average <laughs> the average female i think yeah so in my mind when i was at the fruit machine putting that money and wasting the money i was thinking all the girls are looking at me thinking wow <laughs> look at that look at that man there um i'm not 100% sure if that was the case though they were probably thinking, why has that guy got two pairs of socks on? <laughs> I, was, yeah, I think maybe because if I didn't put the socks in the shoes correctly, it seemed maybe I had one leg longer than the other or so, something like... I often remember coming home with a backache with those socks because it wasn't particularly comfortable. Let me tell you that. <laughs> like your feet were trying to burst out of your shoes, like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> but not very incredible or hulky. <laughs> Like the really pathetic wimp Hulk. Mm. Mm. Yeah, pl playing on the fruit machine. And then yeah. very rarely would I win on the fruit machine. But, you know, sometimes I might win like £10 and then be like, come on, drinks are on me, okay? <laughs> come on, ladies. <laughs> also, there's nothing more attractive than walking around with £50 coins in your pocket. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> Oh, that, that that was the annoying thing, actually. So you'd always pay for drinks and then obviously you'd, you'd get pound coins. And then the next time you go to pay, instead of counting the pound coins, I would just think, well, I'll just get another like 20 pound note out of my pocket and then come home with literally like 30 pound in pound coins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the bank receipts uh, for, for the ones that I put on the card. So good times, really. Good times. It kind of makes you wonder why we... Why did we bother going out? I mean, we didn't really do anything. <laughs> Just standing there with fruit machines, talking to each other, not anybody else. It, it definitely does does make me uh, make me question that. And obviously, the first time we went out, her way, I think the very the very first time we were in a nightclub, and uh, we bought some drinks, and they were actually fruit juice, weren't they? So we were just. Uh, <laughs> You know, impressing the girls, drinking just like some people like drinking maybe it's like uh, neat vodka. So neat means like with just vodka. And me and the Hellraiser were just there with a couple of fruit juices. So pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Two pairs of socks on fruit machine, drinking pure fruit juice. <laughs> now you cannot get badder than that. Real bad boys. Bad boys for life. Oh, God, yeah. So the next one I've got here, um, again, something that unfortunately has happened, um, is don't think peeing in the street is okay. Um, because often you go from one place to another on a night out, there's no toilet. But it's always the classic thing, actually. I leave a pub and think, I could go to the toilet now, but I think I'll be okay. And then as soon as I leave, I think, oh, fuck, I actually can't wait anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do now. It's that cold air. As soon as the cold air hits you, then the, mm. then, the, then the tap comes on. Can't stop it. <laughs> it's like a runaway train. What a poetic way to describe it. The tap comes on. Um, and I, I must admit, I have done it. I know I'm a hooligan, but I have um, urinated on the street, unfortunately. Um, obviously not in a long time, but w when I was in my younger days. Um, one time in particular, I remember, and the Hellraiser actually took a picture Mm. of this mm -hmm. whilst I was doing it um, and then put it on Facebook. Um, but luckily, <laughs> the D-tag function has always been a part of Facebook. So I just went on Facebook one day. Daniel Hellery's tagged you in a picture. I was thinking, oh, maybe a nice picture of me and him on a night out. And it was a picture of me urinating in a street. So thank you for that, Hellraiser. 
I think there was only like the silhouette of your um of your of your old chap, wasn't there? There wasn't <laughs> you wasn't actually <laughs> But yeah, I mean, but it was quite clear what was happening. So lovely rock and roll vocabulary there of describing a penis as an old chap. Um, again, a very poetic way um, to talk about it. So thanks for that, Hellraiser. But yeah, it was very clear what was happening. Um, so yes, th- thanks very much for that. I believe it is still on your Facebook. So if anyone's friends with the Hellraiser, go through some of his old pictures and you will actually find it. You won't find it on mine, obviously, because... I detagged it. I think I've got I've detagged about ninety five percent of pictures I've been tagged in. Um, thank God for the detag button. Is all I'm going to say. Well, I mean, let, let's not complicate things. I'll just post it on the Rock and Roll English group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's let's. What, why would we compl- uh, complicate things? Let's just make it easier. I think so. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So moving on quickly. Um, this one I actually think is is very important. It says, uh, okay, so we're on the do's now, actually. So do go home the first time it crosses your mind. So that it crosses your mind the first time you think about it and not at 3.30 a.m. when you're getting thrown out of a club. Um, I think this is where we differ, Hellraiser, okay? I, I was like you in the past. I never wanted to call it a night, so to call it a night to say that's enough. Um, and I would always wait till the end and then... The night starts getting a bit shit. You're trying to get into someone's house for an after party. They don't want you. All of this. And then you wake up in the morning and you think, I'm a disgrace. Whilst now my tactic is to go to bed early when I'm still having fun. Mm. Because then I wake up in the morning and I think I want more of that. Okay. Because if you go to bed at the point where it's shit, you wake up the next day and you think, I don't know if I want to do that again. Wow. That's profound. That's that's really good. You're, you seem like you're at a really good point in your in your life. <laughs> um, I, I believe I am as well, but um, you've you've never really grasped that concept, have you, Hellraiser? So grasped it, you've never really fully understood. Um, Hellraiser will often be the one trying to uh, continue the path when, when it's gone. It's like, look, all good things come to an end, okay? Which is a nice expression, by the way. So we've had our night, we've had our fun. Let's just call it a night now. Right, true. So, I mean, I've changed tactics slightly now as well. Um, what I what I tend to do is just begin drinking earlier, begin the party a bit earlier, and then try and be in bed by ten latest, at the same level of drunkenness I would be at like <laughs> five a.m. So basically, yeah, the, he- the 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 height of the night is around say six, <laughs> and then. Things like all the nightclubs are open at six. So like things are going off at six. So going off like things are just crazy at six p.m. Aren't they? Nothing's open. I mean, <laughs> I have the, I have my own internal parties. It doesn't matter where I am. It's okay. And then yeah, by ten pff, things are winding down. Party sure. stopped, and then you're in bed with a sure. a book. <laughs> I'm sure you're in a perfect state for reading as well after um, drinking all day. Some nice vocabulary there, though, when he said things are winding down, like th- things are starting to slow down, come to an end. I also liked the fact, Hellraiser, that um, you said you still aim for the same level um, of like drunkness. So you, you actually do have an aim of how drunk you, you want to get um, at, at the beginning of the night, which is good. It's always good to have a goal in life for everything, isn't it? Yeah, targets are good. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, so another one here is do make sure you have enough money for a taxi ride home. Important, that one. <laughs> it, it is important. Not one that I've always followed um, in my life. Um, how about you, Hellraiser? Not not always. And, and then I... when you're walking home in the freezing cold, you're thinking... Why did I put that money in the fruit machine? What what was the point? <laughs> now I'm freezing cold, walking home. I'm alone. It's dark. Why did I do that? One cold pizza slice keeping you warm. <laughs> That's it. That sad stroll home. Yeah, that was often the thing. You'd have a, a bit of money at the end of the night and think, I could get some food or a taxi. What's it going to be? So it was a tough decision. It was always a difficult decision. Oh, God, it's life or death, man. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, I remember once actually getting in a taxi, going a long distance and saying, look, I've only got 
enough, this much money. So can you just take me this far? And he took me that far. And I still had about probably about five kilometers to walk. Um, and I was with another friend and we were walking. And I remember my other friend said, um, I think I'm just going to sleep here. And he took off his uh, T-shirt, put it down on the floor and just lied down on the grass in a field. And then a horse came over to him. And I remember saying, I don't think I want to sleep with the horse licking my face. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave you here. Oh, that'd be quite nice. Would it though? Did you Would leave it? him? Did you leave him there? No, he quickly, quickly did get up and um, walked with me. I guess you just end. just jumped on the horse and rode that home, no? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm I'm really good at riding horses, actually. So it is always just like a cowboy. I was yeah. actually yeah very oh, similar yeah. vibe, very <laughs> similar vibe. Um, okay, and the last one here um, is: Do delete any phone numbers from your phone. Um, that oh, you do not want to drunk call. Very important. Um, very yeah, important. the the classic thing I would always do would be so get someone's phone number, usually a man, about maybe organising a football match or something like that. Um, and let let's say his name was um, Daniel, I would just write D because I thought I I'm, I'm not I'm not going to write the whole name, so I would just write D. So in, in my phone book I had lots of like D, F, S. <laughs> But I, I never knew who any of these people actually were. I just had lots of people with just one letter in my phone book. Was that the end of the story? I, you... <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a punchline. <laughs> no, no, I haven't got a punchline, Hellraiser. Uh, There's nothing funny about my story. So uh, the punchline's like the, the funny bit. You should keep that in the podcast because that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it stays. So, so that's never happened to you, Hellraiser. What? I put a name in my phone differently. Yeah, <laughs> sure, of course. I mean, I thought you were going to say no. And sometimes I called him and I asked him out for a drink, and it was a boss of some wing, some football club. I don't know something, yeah, you know, something interesting. But that was really boring. All of <laughs> all of that. <laughs> it's so good to have such encouragement from a friend. That that's the real the real beauty. Although speaking of that, you have actually just reminded me of when you used to get my phone, Hellraiser, and text um, lots of people. Um, very indifferent things of um, absurdity, so of like ridiculous things. But the, the one that I suppose most hurt was um, when you text lots of girls in my phone and said, hey, babe, do you want to go out for a drink with me? Um <laughs> Obviously, I don't know, 99% of them didn't respond. But I specifically remember one girl at work did respond and said, yeah, sure, when would you like to go? And, I mean, it was not someone I was particularly interested in. So when I had to go to work on the Monday, <laughs> it was a extremely, extremely awkward situation because I, I went for the tactic of just not, ever mentioning it again mm. because I thought do I want to tell her that it was just my friend that sent that and it was just a joke or I can just pretend nothing happened and just ignore her for the rest of my life which is what I did and then I think very <laughs> soon after I actually quit my job as well because that was the only reason <laughs> the only thing I could do <laughs> didn't you move didn't you move away as well I think you moved towns I, I think that's the reason I moved to Italy basically <laughs> so <laughs> And this, I mean, think about it. Without that message, we wouldn't be having this conversation uh, and the podcast wouldn't have started. So, yep. I mean, just... All thanks to you, Hellraiser. All thanks to think you. Think about these things and, you know, you're welcome for all of that stuff. Uh, on that text message point, the, I mean, that was not a one-way street, was it? Uh, you <laughs> did often, and this is not you know, just one off, like quite often message an ex-girlfriend's mum from my phone <laughs> saying similar things about me wanting to meet up with her and that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't fancy her daughter, but I fancied her instead. And then she would then read them sometimes. And then I would just oh. have to message, message the ex-girlfriend and say, yeah, they've done it again. Can you get your mum's phone and delete those messages? <laughs> What what wonderful times. I believe I was doing that 
with uh, like as payback for you though Hellraiser um he did use some lovely vocabulary there he said it wasn't a one-way street so like basically both of us um were doing this all I'll say Hellraiser is thank god for passcodes on phones hey because now that's not possible because you now have to put in like a code to open the phone um whilst back in those days it was very possible very possible danger was real <laughs> and uh, present and everywhere yeah and the only way to get away from the danger was to move country um <laughs> which is what i've had to do change your entire life um so we did actually end up on something exciting because of my shit story though hellraiser there so that's the thing that's why i just keep firing these stories okay because they'll always take you somewhere else okay yeah, definitely. Keep on with the boredom, and then from that we can craft something interesting, I think. E- exactly. So similar to what you just said, if I hadn't mentioned that boring story of putting numbers in my phone, we wouldn't have got to this point. So, you know, Hellraiser, this is how it, this is how the cookie crumbles, baby. This is how it goes. It's a sign of true genius that is turning shit into something <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> exactly. True genius. On that note, I think it's time to say goodbye. I think so too. Ciao. See you later, Hellraiser. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, so that was me and the Hellraiser speaking about the do's and don'ts of a night out. So let's have a look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. Um, At the beginning, the Hellraiser said Batman and superhero masks are starting to pick up in Sudan. So this phrase of a pickup has got lots of different meanings. In this situation, it means like it's starting to increase the amount of people using them. Um, I mentioned I got my mask from a fancy dress shop. Um, so that's the type of shop. If you want a costume to look like a vampire or something, what shop are you going to go to? A fancy dress shop. Um The word as well, a night out. That's just such a lovely British term. Let's have a good night out. Go out drinking and do lots of stuff. The Hellraiser also used a very nice term of um, a walk down memory lane. So it's quite self-explanatory, really, isn't it? Like reliving something from the past. It's obviously a nice thing, a nice walk down memory lane. Um, I said that I have um, shrunk, which is the past participle of the verb shrink. If something shrinks, it gets smaller. You put your clothes in the washing machine. What happens? They shrink. Um, We said don't take up smoking. So don't start smoking. So basically start a new activity. We had the term as well, the cool kid on the block, um, which is a stupid way basically to say someone that thinks they're really cool. We had the term take a drag of the cigarette. So that term take a drag is when you go, you can take a drag of other things as well. Um, We had the term um, old chap. Um, which the Hellraiser very nicely used to describe um, my penis. There's no good way to say that, is there? Um, A very funny term, very British, but very nice. Um, We had the term as well, cross your mind. We said, go home the first time it crosses your mind. So the first time you think about it. If you do the IELTS exam, um, it's a good thing to use that, actually. I often tell students to say to the examiner, oh, that's a difficult question. It's never crossed my mind. And we had the term call it a night. Um, So that's when you say, right, I'm going home. Notice, though, during the daytime, we say call it a day. But obviously, when you're out at night, we say call it a night. Um, I said that the Hellraiser has never grasped that concept of going home um so when you grasp something it's when you understand it we had the other nice term all good things come to an end again self-explanatory but again very nice um i then said things are going off at six o'clock six p.m so if things are going off they are crazy um then the hell raiser said yeah at 10 things are winding down so things are starting to relax everyone's you know taking it easy Then with my boring story, the Hellraiser said he was waiting for a punchline. So the punchline is the bit where you say something that generally makes people laugh. Um, I then spoke about the different levels of absurdity of the messages that the Hellraiser used to send from my phone. So if something is absurd, it's crazy. And the Hellraiser said it wasn't a one way street, um, which is a very nice term, basically to say, you know, we were both 
doing this. And then I said, well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, baby. That's how it goes. There's nothing you can do about it. OK, it's just the way life is. Anyway, remember, all of this rock and roll vocabulary is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com slash episode 204. I will see you all again in two weeks, people. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.